So today we're going to have a look at the uh, street style uh, cabinet air raid siren control panel. Uh, these were probably the most numerous in the UK during the Cold War. There were two variants available. There was the siren switch panel number one, which was the uh, standard 415 volt three phase supplied panel. Um, and then there was this variant, the number three. Uh, so this one actually ran on 240 volt supply. Uh, so this was for areas where three phase wasn't available. Uh, but it did still run a three phase siren so the way they did this it would have a twin 240 volt supply coming in uh, but one of those uh, 240 volt supplies would go through a unit which they marked up as a condenser uh, that would have been a grey box just down to the right hand side um, of this control panel uh, and we'll show you it just in the photo coming up now Uh, so this unit, uh, the condenser, would have changed the phase angle of the uh, second 240 volt supply coming in. So across the two of these incoming supplies, that would have given the panel a 500 volt supply. And using those two and a uh, zero volt neutral, that would have been the three cables going up to the three phase uh, siren, which was an induction motor. So having a look at what we've got on this panel here, the main incoming cables would have come in through the isolator switch at the bottom here. Uh, and this was pretty standard for both versions of the panel. As you can see, if it was three phase, it would have had a live coming in on each of their main fuse blocks there. And as this was a uh, switch panel number three, they would have just used the left and the right hand fuse there uh, for the live cables coming in. So opening up the main distribution fuse panel for this uh, control unit straight away we've got our original circuit diagram there uh, which has actually got quite a nice uh, diagram there showing the functions of the auto whaler um, and as we saw on earlier panels uh, there's a bank of spare cartridge fuses to cover all the different sizes there again so if an engineer arrived and one had blown there's always one available to change. Um, on the unit inside as we have used this to power it up at shows we did swap over the original fuses for some more um, modern safer uh, uh, breakers there just as it was being used in the public space uh, but all we did there was just attach the din rail there on the original bolt holes so we didn't have to drill anything but the original fuses uh, which are just down here could easily just be popped back in just by taking that din rail off so uh, we'll go for the functions with these fuses down here so we've got the original uh, cover there which covers the live terminals behind and it actually marked up which each of these uh, fuses would be doing so the uh, PO there this would be going off to the uh, BT equipment uh, this one is marked as spare and in fact there's not even a fuse in the carriage there You've got the auto whaler power supply. So these were all run off 240 volt single phase. And uh, as this was run on a twin 240 volt uh, supply, if there was any imbalance on the cable or any fault conditions, uh, this could cause some problems here. So what they actually did, just sitting in the back there, is the original transformer there. So that just smoothed out the power supply there. Uh, which ran all of these uh, lower ampage uh, 240 volt single phase supplies here uh, just to protect that equipment. Um, moving along here, the two siren motor fuses are actually at opposite ends of the uh, board here. And if you look at the original fuses here, you can see they were actually separated. So the motor fuses uh, were always painted red in these. So. The first 240 volt supply, as you can see, the supply buzz bar into that is all bolted together. So this was actually one side of the siren motor. This was the uh, heater plate and this was the power supply for the uh, transformer we were just talking about. But the second siren motor fuse was kept separate and that came off that different 240 volt supply, which was at a different phase angle. So they couldn't run all this together because that would have caused a a fault condition because of the different phase angles between them so just to the left hand side hiding away there is the original contactor and uh, and we can see the original corded kind of cable they use down there which is kind of why we had to do a bit of rewiring here on this panel uh, just to make it safe for uh, 
running up at events and we've got a more modern contactor there so moving up to the top half of the panel obviously we had the heater power supply down here this would have powered the isolator up here and this was for the um, heater plates at the end of the siren again just to prevent freezing and again you can see there's another single phase fuse inside there and obviously we had our auto whaler there for testing with its uh, electromechanical timer up there and just a test lamp in between uh, where the cables run through there would have been activated as well. So that pretty much covers our uh, functions of the siren switch panel number three. Um, I do have a friend who has a siren panel number one so hopefully at some point I'll be able to pop over there and maybe do a video um, just on the differences between the, the three and the one. We do have a uh, another more modern panel coming in soon for recommissioning, so uh, we'll do a video on that when it gets here. And I suppose the last thing left to do is just to do a quick test on this one.